today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful mosaic bowl. I get my bowls from the Hoff Craft Company and I'll put a link to their site below. These bowls come in different sizes and grades. This is a second grade bowl, which means that it does have some flaws, but it's sound enough to mosaic on. So the first thing I'll do is seal this with a mixture of one part wood glue to three parts water. That's my own personal combination that works best for me. You can see there's a little defect here. That doesn't bother us. That's not going to matter. I actually painted the bottom of this. Sometimes I don't shard the outside. I just shard the inside and paint the outside. But I thought maybe people would like to know how to do the outside, so I'm going to do that. here, And we want to make sure that when we shard the outside, we don't get too far down here and interfere with where it sits. So all I do is I take a pencil and look down there, try and make sure that uh, I'm getting it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I guess that's my motto, doesn't have to be perfect. For the bottom of the bowl, I am going to want to use uh, similar shapes and thicknesses of shard. So I'm going to be taking mostly from this old pitcher here and then I'm going, oh I'll try to keep that back stamp intact. The secret to sharding a rounded surface is to cut your pieces really small. Now you can try to find curved pieces to fit the curve of the base, but whenever I try to do that, it's, it's not exactly right and it doesn't lay down flat. So I just go with the tried and true method, which is uh, snipping pieces into very small pieces. And I have a whole video on how to cut shards with nippers if you need more information about that. I don't have a preference as far as brands of these materials. This is TEC Type 1 Mastic. And I'm going to tint this just a little bit with some craft paint stuff here. And the reason why I color this is so that after I grout it, if any of this seeps up towards the surface, it won't be very noticeable. I'm going to turn my bowl upside down on a thing to lift it up. And there we go. Nice, easy surface to work on. And I'm going to want to stop just maybe a half an inch from the lid here because I'm going to be doing some stuff with the rim and I don't want any of this stuff. The beauty of these Hofcraft bowls is the wide rim. It is so humid here today that I feel confident that I can cover this before it dries. It takes a long time for it to dry, but it doesn't take long for a skim to form on it. And at the point where a skim forms at the top, you got to scrape that away and use newer. I'll do a few little cute little bead things in here. A couple of tiny ridge pieces here. Huh. 
I don't know if those beads will stay in or not. And how far you want to go with this as far as space between shards is entirely up to you. I usually um, crowd mine quite a bit, but you could just do just a few and it would give the effect of being covered. You have to go inside, honey? My cat has to go inside to use the bathroom. Which is kind of weird, but... There's no explaining some of the things that cats do. And then just try to clear out this stuff coming up here. I never get it all, and that's one reason why I uh, color it. In classic mosaic, you would try to have enough space between the shards for the grout to really sink in between the shards, but this is a different kind of mosaic. And I think this will just about do it. My first bird nest bowl was a project for Country Home Magazine and took several weeks to create. And the bird is a, it's an antique chalkware wall pocket. Okay, so this bowl has been sitting for a couple of days now. And before I start on the inside of it, I'm going to go ahead and grout the outside now for a couple of different reasons. Number one, to get it out of the way. And also, if I do any decorating on the rim or anything that sticks up from the rim, it's going to be a little bit harder to turn it upside down and grout it. So I always like to get kind of the tedious things out of the way first. So. Here's the grout I'll be using. Nothing special about it. I just make sure that it's sanded. Okay, so that's one half cup. We're gonna see how much it takes here. One, these are tablespoons. Two, three, and I'm gonna mix that up and see where I am. Of course, the paint counts as a liquid too. can already see that it's that awful color of brown that I don't like. Put in a little bit of yellow. And I just use paints from Michaels or Walnut or Walnut, Walmart. And I want to make sure that I get this damp enough, but I don't want to get it to get too wet because when your grout is too wet, that's what causes cracking in the grout line when the piece is done. And we, wanna, we want to avoid cracking at the grout line at all costs.
it's not kitty food, honey. Yeah, see, that's way too wet. So I'm going to add a little bit more grout. You want, you want this to end up being about the same consistency as brownie mix. I think that's going to be good enough for the outside of the bowl. It's still a little bit thin, but it could thicken up a little bit during the slaking process. Uh, the slaking process is mainly you just let this sit here, let it sit and rest for five minutes. So I'll be back in five minutes. Okay, five minutes is up. I'm going to give it another little here. That is still a little bit thin, but I think it's, like I say, going to be okay for this project. And then I just scoop some of it out with my hand and start spreading it around the bowl, making sure to get up here at the edge and down here at the rim. And you want to push it in, fill up all those little crevices. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the bottom with it too. I'll probably wipe most of that back. And then the edge here I need to make sure is done real nice. Always use gloves when you're working with grout. It is an extremely caustic material. Okay, and then I'm just going to be using these paper towels for this. These are Viva paper towels. And I am partial to Viva because they are as close to cloth as I can get. Um, I don't use regular, real washcloths or anything like that because you can't let any of this grout go down your sink. So you, you know, you can rinse them out in a pail of water outside or something, but I've just decided that paper towels are the best for this job. And I'll want to be sure and get this edge cleared up really well because I'm going to be doing special sharding on that rim there. You have about one hour before your grout starts getting fairly dry. And you can either clear it away a, a whole lot or just kind of lightly. It's a completely different look with e either one of those techniques. So you can just experiment with that. That's about good enough for me. And then uh, I'll let that dry for a while and then polish it up a little bit more and then I can start on the inside and I won't have to worry about this anymore. Okay, so I have a lot of interesting pieces for this bowl. I've got this it's antique whites is what I'm trying to do here. And I've got this which has this beautiful back stamp on it and it's beautifully crazed. And then, uh, just typical, this is a pretty border piece here. Um, really heavy duty. This is a platter, one of my favorite pieces. And then I'm going to want some curved pieces. So, I thought I'd try that. I will definitely be using this. I love that thing. Uh, flowers, I don't know yet. Maybe a couple. 
and maybe a bird. I do have this little bird here that I uh, decoupaged for kind of an old look. I wanted to have a little bit of a rough hewn look. Here's another piece. And this piece here, what I'm going after here is um, this pink right here as it goes down to the white. I love that kind of pink and if you throw that in with some antique whites it turns out just beautifully. I always like to start at the bottom center for the insides of these and use a pearl or a jewel or something. Um, so I'm going to be using this cool coin that I got. I got a whole bag of coins from someone on eBay. And I want it to set up a little bit. So I'm not going to push down real hard. Then I'm going to just snuggle these in here. I love the way the coin has this scalloped edge to it. Maybe just a couple of these. I'm putting this on pretty thick because I want a lot of these heavy textured shards in here. a tiny bit of color. Now the beauty of tile adhesive is that you can put your thick shards down and glue them all the way down and then put your put your thinner shards in and and don't press them down as far so that they'll match the height of the other ones. And if you don't like the way something's going, you've got a lot of time to remove shards and put different ones in.
I'm really trying to support this flower. These are more of my bottom ridge pieces. Oh, that's a pretty piece. Here's a figurine salt shaker, and uh, these are a dime a dozen. Not that crazy. I'm not, I don't have knickknacks sitting around, so I'm going to put this. But my point was look at the beautiful curvy pieces on it. So I'm going to put it in my little bag here, take my trusty hammer. Wear goggles when you do this kind of thing. And just tap it a couple of times. Oh, also, you should remember to check and make sure there's no salt in these before you do them. And I end up with pieces that look like this. Just beautiful.
going to start on the edging right now. One of the things I love about these Hofcraft bowls is the wide rim on the top. If you have a hard time cutting an edge like this, you can always turn your piece over and see if that helps. So this will have a real clunky look. When you're cutting a plate edge like this, go in from the cut side rather than the finished side. It'll be a lot easier. I found this cool piece in my drawer that I thought would be cool for something. Getting a little warm now. Rosie. 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 She was in a little while ago. Yes, yeah, she wanted to go out the front door. Had an hour.
some people use tweezers. But I like the control I have when I use my fingers. This is going to take a long time to dry before I grout it because I've put the mastic on so darn thick. So I'll probably give it a good three days, maybe up to a week before I grout it. So that's about it. Um, you don't have to crowd your shards as tightly as I do mine. That's just my style. And I'll see you later for the grouting. So I ran across my little bird when I was cleaning up. And I do really think I'd like to put that on this piece. So, unfortunately, these big clunky pieces of mine are going to have to go, at least for a minute, until I can fit this guy in here. Yeah, so those big clunky pieces can be what locks this bird in place, I guess. This is about three hours after my gluing this morning and it's still damp enough to be able to remove things and redo things easily. I think that's going to be about perfect. I like that it's understated. I'm going to hide a little bit of red in here. Okay. Okay, it's grouting day today, so I'm going to, with one cup of grout, my paints. And I think I'm going to go a little bit darker on the inside of this bowl than on the outside because I really want those uh, shards to stand out. That might have been too much, of course. Although, once I get these lumps chopped up, it might be okay. And if you can work on this outdoors, it's nice because it's really kind of a messy process. But we're running out of outdoor time here in Iowa. And you can count on your grout being about two shades lighter when it's dry. So I want to make mine about two shades darker than I want it to be in the end. Okay. 
way too watery. Sometimes you have to really go back and forth on this. That looks pretty good. That's a pretty color of brown. And then we'll let this sit and slake for five minutes. Okay, here I am, and here's the bowl. And we only need to do the inside because we've already done the outside. So I'm going to take my grout here, give it one more stir. And then start putting it in here. I'm going to avoid that bird a little bit because that's decoupage. And uh, I don't know if it can tolerate the grout until it's sealed a few more times. Also probably going to have a little trouble with this thing here. But uh, we've got about an hour to clean this stuff off of here. And there's a lot of really deep crevices. And I have several sheets of plastic down here on my table so that when one gets messy, I can just pull it up and the next one is right there. So I'm making sure to get around this flower and I'm going to have to probably toothpick that out of there. I'm using my Viva paper towels for this and kind of pushing in while cleaning off. to get down underneath there. If you can see underneath that flower. I should not have taken my gloves off, obviously. Some people use a craft stick to remove the grout and do it one piece at a time, but I don't have the patience for that. So much for steering clear of the bird, but I think it will survive this. Okay, now I am going to move from paper towels into rags. Damp at first and then drier as we go along. You don't want your rags too wet or, once again, you're going to be adding too much moisture to your grout. So just lightly dampen it. I get really cheap 18-pack washcloths from Walmart and then just throw them away when I'm done with them. 
and that's pretty much it. I will um, let it sit for a while and then come back and do more. And every time I go buy it, I'll give it a little polishing up. So this is the Picassiette Grotto type mosaic. It's not a classic mosaic. It's more like a grotto. And this is a good example here. This is a memory pot that I made several years ago that my mother just adored. And it's got just all kinds of stuff embedded in there. And it's not grouted. And this uh, crock itself is a old cracked pot that I got from the resale room where my mother lived at the time. So it was nice to recycle that into something. It had a big crack in it, but uh, it's been holding up well. Anyway, back to the bowl. Um, as I say, as time goes on, I'll use the dryer rags probably go in there with a toothpick. I don't like to use Q-tips because I'm always getting those white fibers mixed in with my grout. And that can be a little bit frustrating when you're in a hurry to get this grout off of here. And I think I'm out of plastic sheets. This is the ultimate shabby chic look, too. For women who love shabby chic, this is a wonderful craft for you. Okay, so this is obviously not the kind of bowl that you would serve food in. It's more decorative, but I have had people who bought them say they use them on maybe like a hall table to throw their keys in. So knowing that, we want to make sure that there isn't any, there aren't any sharp edges in here. So I'm just going to wear goggles and go around the edges here. This is a little Dremel tool that I have gotten a lot of use out of over the years. These flowers always have horrible sharp edges. And I like to get mine so that they're so smooth that when I run a table, uh, paper towel over it, nothing catches it. It doesn't catch on anything. That's my goal. There's my little bit of red there. And then I'll use... Uh, paint brushes. I think there might be something there that I didn't get uncovered. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a cell phone picture of your piece before you start grouting it so that you can look at it later and make sure that you haven't missed anything. You can see that the um, mastic is coming up a little bit here, and that's why I color that mastic so that when it bubbles up like that, um, it's not as noticeable. And it just adds to that grotto look. The last thing is just taking a washcloth that has been dipped into a bowl of water mixed with vinegar, and that will really shine the thing up. But don't do that until it's fairly dry. So I, I like the way this turned out. Um, this look isn't for everybody. It's a traditional <clears throat> shabby chic grotto type piece, and very easy to make. I'm not sure how long it took me 
from beginning to end. I think it was like maybe two hours. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next project. <laughs>